Hi and welcome to the Fate Without Jacket Make Along Part 1. Today we will start making the yoke of the jacket and we will talk about the chartreuse. Uh, you have two options of how to follow or how to join the Make Along. First option is to follow it on, on my blog for free. Every Friday, a new portion of the instructions will be released in my blog together with the progress pictures and the video tutorial as today. Or another option is to go to Ravelry or Etsy today and purchase a print-friendly copy of the pattern with all instructions at once. Please note that no pictures will be included there, just the written text, but you will get a complete pattern in one very easy to print PDF file. Um, you can have a look at the front page of this pattern uh, to have an idea how it looks. Uh, this page lists the materials, the sizings, the abbreviations, picture and copyright notice, which I ask you to read uh, as well. Please note that uh, even if it's a free pattern, still it's protected by the copyright. Before we actually start to crochet fatal art jacket, uh, you should choose the right size. And I would like to talk more about this. Uh, in the pattern, you will see the sizes uh, chapter and you will see a few lines. One line is with the letters uh, XXS, XSS, M and so on. And then two lines with the numbers. The numbers are the same. They are just represented with the centimeters and inches, depending on which metrics you are, what metrics you are used to. Please don't rely on the letters. They just give you general information, general idea about the sizing. But for example, if you come to the store and you usually have the size large and you see the jacket which you like, you won't buy it right away, even if it's uh, marked with the size large. You will try it on, right? So the same is with the Fedora jacket and any other crochet and knitting garment. When you see the pattern, these letters are just give you just the general information about the size, but what you should look into is the numbers. The numbers are given for the finished bust. What does it mean? Um, I've made a drawing of a lady. Let's say it's you. Um, first, you should take the measuring tape and measure your actual bust. Actual bust is the widest um, measurement around your chest. So you, you have a bust here and you take the measuring tape and you measure your, the circumferences around your bust. This is your actual bust. Let's say that your actual bust is 100 centimeters. This is your actual bust you measured and you should add ease to that. Is. is it's the space for example let's say we have the jacket here so our lady is wearing the jacket is is the room the space between the body and the jacket the more ease you add the more room you will have in the bust so you should plus to your actual bust the ease. Uh, the pattern is written for five, ten centimeters ease. You can add five centimeters or ten or even more, depending on how much roomy you want your jacket to be. Please note that the jacket, the lower, the lower body of the jacket is straight. It means that we will not have any shaping for the waist or for the hips here. So what I would do is measure your body at different points, for example, the waistline and the upper hips to see which numbers you have here. For example, I have very small bust, but I have quite a big belly. So I prefer roomy garments. I always uh, go one size up. So I would add the biggest is for the bust so that I make sure I have the same ease or enough space for the waistline. If your bust, for example, uh, is big and your waist is very slim, 
then naturally you will have more ease here and maybe your jacket will be a little bit baggy which you don't want for example then you can add less ease for the bust and it will end up with less ease for the waist and upper hips as well so you should measure your body at different points uh, see the numbers uh, add some ease um, uh, you should decide if you go for the bigger ease or for the smaller ease for example i would add at least 10 centimeters here for myself or maybe even 15 and that gives me 110 centimeters for the finished bust this is the number the finished bust and so we have 110 and we should choose the closest number from the sizing chart so what we see we see 109.5 or 113 so um, I would go for myself because I want roomy garment I would go for the larger size for myself but if you like a more fitting uh, garments you can go for the smaller size so once you once you choose which size you want you should I would recommend you to take the marker and mark this size for example I would go for the bigger size I will I would go for this one and then you should read entire pattern or read as you go take the marker and mark exactly the same uh, point in every place where you see the numbers for different sizes so in my case uh, you see the first size then the brackets and one two three four it's fourth size after the brackets so what you need is to mark the fourth number after the brackets everywhere you see it one two three four for example here as well this will be the numbers you should follow for your own size if you mark it uh, correctly then you will make sure you don't jump uh, from one size to another and you have the right stitch count and you're just on track with your pattern and with your yoke this is everything I would like to tell you about the sizing and now we can start making our yoke and talk about the short rows. Fade to light jacket is a top-down garment. It means that we will begin with the neck opening. Uh, you see the light color here. This is uh, the band, the dark side, uh, the dark color is the band, which will be added in the very end. But we will uh, begin with this bit, with the light color. We will chain as many chains as per your size, which you marked already in the pattern. And then we will be building the yoke down here, uh, making the increases at the reglan lines. Reglan is this diagonal line from neck opening down to the armhole, this is the sleeve. So this is the reglan line, and we have four reglan lines in our jacket. Two at the front, and the same lines at the back. Two at the back. When we begin with the yoke, first we need to, to make uh, a few short rows. You will see short rows in almost every knitting and crochet top-down clothing pattern. The aim of the short rows is to raise the back neck. If you have a look here, I fold it, it's unfolded. This is our neck opening. If you fold it as if you wear it, you will see that this back part is that much higher than the front. We need the deeper line at the front for our neck so that we feel comfortable. And this difference is reached by working the short rows. So here at the back and partially on the sleeve and on the front, we will be working the short rows and I will now explain you how we will do it. Uh, first, I will explain you with the 
paper and pen so that you understand the idea of the sheet rows. Let's say that this is our uh, first row, chain with the row one. We have uh, the markers here, here in four places. These markers indicate our Raglan lines. So we begin first row, we'll, first short row. We'll start in the edge, edge and first we need to go all the way. This is the front, this is the sleeve and this is the back. So we'll go across the front sleeve and center back. We'll end somewhere here and put the beginning of the row marker. You will see this operation in the pattern. This marker should be a different color than all your regular markers so that you can easily understand where it is. So once you find the center back, you will go all the way here to the sleeve again and somewhere here, turn and come all the way back to the another sleeve at the same point, turn and come to beginning of the rope again. This will be your short row one. At the same time, you will be making increases for back and the sleeves at these raglan points. Everything is explained in the pattern and I will explain you with the hook as well. Just uh, This is just the idea of how you need to do it. So the direction is from the edge, you go here, you go to the sleeve, turn, go back to another sleeve, turn and come back to the bull marker, beginning of the round marker. For short row one, we are doing the same, but we will go further up to the front. So you'll continue on the same side, you will come sleeve, come across the sleeves to the front, and somewhere here, turn and go to another front and turn and come to the bore again. On this row, you will also be making the increases in the raglan lines. They will be growing like this because of the increases, but this time you will be only making increases for the back and for the front, but not for the sleeves. Again, you will see everything. And the last short row, short row three, uh, just the longest one, again, you will go here and here and come back and in the end you will just go throughout and across, uh, around the entire yoke and will come back, come back to the another edge. So after all short rows are built, you see that here you have many rows and here you have just two rows. It means that this back part will be wider than the front part than the front part and this will raise the back neck so that you have deeper line neckline for the front this is the idea of the sutros and now we will do it with a hook I have already made the chains and the first row, which is called the set up row in the pattern. It was worked on the wrong side. Uh, I'm making the smallest size because it's easier and faster to show you everything here in the video, but you should uh, check the numbers for your own size in the pattern. Um, here we can see uh, four markers which are the same color. These are the Reglan lines we talked about already. Uh, this small marker uh, is an indication of the right side because the short row one will start on the right side and I strongly recommend you, because we will turn right and wrong side all the time, I strongly recommend you to use the marker to indicate the right side here so that you are on track all the time. Uh, here you can see that we have two fronts the sleeves and the back and each reglan seam have has a marker. So now we will start with a short row one and first as we talked already uh, while drawing we will come all the way across the front sleeve to the center back and put 
the beginning of the row marker, which is a different color than the rest, which should be a different color because it will be easier for you to see it and understand that it's that marker. Okay, so please uh, look into the pattern for the short row one. Uh, yes, another important note. Uh, I'm using I'm making the smallest size, but for the large sizes you will use two worlds at the same time and you will start alternating them on the short row one. So I will use another color here in the video to show you where exactly the the worlds are changed and where the floats of yarn stay. This uh this is for the sizes uh, from starting with medium if you want with uh, to make it with two cakes up to the larger size for, for the smallest size You will just use one cake and you don't have to change between the colors Okay, so we will begin with the short row one We make it on the right side. You see the more the right uh, the right side marker is here so we chain one to begin and make single crochet into the first stitch then you will follow the pattern for your own size you should chain one skip the chain space and make uh, a single crochet a certain number of times for my size it's 22 for your size it's different so you should look into the pattern and choose your own number so for me it's 22 so it's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've made 10 single crochets. You see that we are over the Reglan marker already. Uh, to keep the track correctly, we should move this marker to uh, next corresponding space. So it was here, but we should move it here. So it should always stay in the same line. I made 10 single crochets, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Again, we reach the marker, we move it to the corresponding space, and we made 15. I made 15. Just remember this number for yourself, like your number, not the 15, but what? 15. 16, 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, or another number for your size. Please make sure that you make the singles into the singles of the previous row and chains over the chains of the previous row. And now we will make chain one, which will be marked as the beginning of the board. And at the same time, for two worlds option, we will change to a new world here. Or you can, or you should continue with the same world for the smallest sizes. So that's the chain one. You skip one space and make a single crochet here. And this chain space will be our beginning of the round spot, which we mark with a different color and it's also should be the center back you see it's center back so if, if i put this yoke back we can see that the, the front the sleeves center back the sleeve and the front again and we continue don't turn don't do anything but can but continue again um we should chain one and single crochet until last space and single before the regular marker. So we chain one and single crochet until we reach the last space before 
the next regular marker. You don't need to count the stitches here, you just need to find this last space and you see it's here. So we have this space is marked with the regular marker. This is the last space before it and the single crochet. And the pattern says that we need to make increase, chain one and make increase before this space. So increase is made with single crochet in next stitch chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. This is our increase, first increase for the back. We chain one, skip the regular marker and make increase for the sleeve here. So we make single chain and single into the next stitch. The regular marker should be moved up to the uh, to the corresponding space above it, and we are at the sleeve. So now you should follow the pattern and see how many singles you should make. I should make one single, so because I'm making the smaller size, so I chain one, make one single. For the larger sizes, you will make two or three singles according to your size. Then I make one chain more and slip stitch into the next single crochet. And this is, we are in the middle, approximately in the middle of the sleeve. And here we will turn and continue on the wrong side. You should chain one, skip this space and single crochet into the next stitch and repeat it until the beginning of the row. Make sure you make uh, the singles correctly in the increased one. Don't miss any of the stitches. So you just continue. Again, you see we passed the regular marker, so it should be moved up immediately to the corresponding space so that you are on track and we come back to the beginning of the row. The beginning of the row is that center back marker which was another color so you should come with the same stitch pattern with the same repeat all over again. So we come back we are working on the wrong side and we come to the center break to the beginning of the row. See? Now we should chain one, skip this space, mark it as a beginning of the round again because this marker should also be moved to the corresponding spaces. Uh, for the two worlds option you should change to another wheel here and the float should stay on the wrong side. We are on the wrong. Uh, we are on the wrong side right now. So you ch chain one, make single crochet and move up your marker to this new new space. Okay. And now. We go, we continue on the wrong side and make the same increases for another set. So uh, let's have a look. We started here, we went on the right side to the center, but marked it, marked it, went to the center, to the middle of the sleeve, making uh, increases on both sides of this marker. Then we made a, a slip stitch, turned, came back to the beginning of the round center back and now we need to do the same bit here so that it's symmetrical. So we continue to the to the, the to the middle of the another sleeve here making the same increases here. So we follow we just follow the pattern word by word. We continue with the stitch pattern chain one and single into the next stitch until you come to last space and single before next regular marker. We don't count here anymore, we're just working with the same stitch pattern and you see 
here is the space with the regular marker, here is the single crochet, and here is the last space before it. So we chain one, make increase into this last stitch before the marker space, chain one, miss the space with the marker, make increase into the next one, the marker is moved into the space between these two increases between because it's um, the corresponding space above the, the previously marked one. Now we chain one and make as many singles as stated in the pattern. For my size it's only one single. One single. Then we make chain one and slip stitch into the next one. So we do exactly the same thing as we did for this sleeve section. Then we turn and continue on to the right side. You see this marker? So we are correct. We continue on to the right side and we chain one and make single crochet into the next stitch all the way back to the beginning of the row, which is orange marker in my, in my case. And at the same time, when we when we skip, when we reach the markers, the regular markers, and skip them, we should move them to the corresponding spaces so that our line of increases is just staying the same. So I'm continuing to the beginning of the row marker, and that's orange one in my case. Okay, that was the last single, and here is the mark space. And this is the short row one. We finished it. We are again on the right side, and we finished it. And both sides should be symmetrical. And as you can see, they are. This is our back. We changed to another wheel here for the biggest sizes. For the small sizes, you just do it with the same color and this is the middle of the sleeves and you can see the small bumps in the middle of the both sleeves. And you can see already that the back part is already wider than the front part. It means that we're building this back, we are raising the back neck. Now we will be making the short row too. Short row one, uh, short row two is made in the same way as uh, short row one. We will continue on the right side. We don't turn our work, so we reach the beginning of the round, and we will not turn our work. We're still staying on the right side. Um, we will come across the back, across the sleeve to the front, turn. So we will go further. You can, it's easier to see here because I used the different colors. So we will come further to the front, turn, come the way back, all the way back to another front at the same point, turn and come back to the uh, beginning of the board, the center back again. Uh, the difference of this row, the short row two, is that we will be making increases only for the back and for the front, not for the sleeves. Let's see how it's done. So we finished our first row before the beginning of the board, we chain one and change to the second whirl um, at the back of our work so that the floats of yarn stay at the right side. Uh, chain one and single crochet into the next stitch and we should move this beginning of the round marker to this new space which was directly above the previous one. Um, now we continue with the stitch pattern to the raglan marker. So we chain one and continue to one again to one space and single crochet before the raglan marker. The same in the same way as we did it for the short row one. You will make different number of stitches because you are making the different size than me. We are here 
and we need to chain one and make an increase in this last stitch before the marker. Increase is made by single, chain, single, enter the same stitch. Then we chain one, skip this space and don't make increases for the sleeve. So we will just make one single here, move the reglan marker into this last space which was directly above the marked one and we continue with the stitch pattern to the next reglan marker and when we reach this slip stitch here we will be making the single crochet in the, into the same stitch of previous row that where the slip stitch was made i will show you so we chain one and continue with the same stitch pattern as before just here we reached this chain one space and slip stitch was here so we just chain one skip the slip stitch and make the single into the same stitch as the slip stitch and it makes our transition between the short rows invisible and continuous per pattern to the next regular marker okay we reached it now we chain one and make increase for the front into the next we skip the space and make increase for the front here and move the raglan marker to the corresponding space and now you should look into the pattern carefully to see how many more singles you should make in my case i will make only one single for the smallest size so i make one single chain one and slip stitch into the next one now we turn and continue chain one skip the space single crochet in the next one and continue with the same stitch pattern all the way back to the beginning of the row marker when you reach the reglan markers, you should move them to the corresponding space as before. It's better to do it right away so that you don't lose the track of your stitches. Okay, so we are making it. We are at the sleeve now, passing the sleeve. This is the next space with the reglan marker. We skip it and move the reglan marker right away to this skip to this new space. And we come back to the beginning of the row. many stitches here to the orange one and we are before the marker we are on the wrong side now we chain one change to the new whirl make sure that you aren't stays on the wrong side because we are on the wrong side right now uh, we chain one and make single crochet into the next stitch and move your beginning of the row marker to this new new space uh, and we are at the center back so we will we should do the same thing on the other side so again we go with the stitch pattern to one space and one single before the next reglan marker here I have already made the chain one so we make increase here 
for the back chain one skip the regular marker and no increases for the sleeve we remember that we don't need increases for the sleeve mark this space we continue with the stitch pattern to the next regular marker and remember to make here you see this is the slip stitch from the previous row this is the chain one space so we chain one skip the space and make you can see this bump so we need to go into the um, single crochet of the previous row where the slip stitch was made to make the transition invisible continue to the next regular marker no increases again because we are at the sleeve chain one skip this space and make increase into the next one that's for the front bring the marker back before the increase so that you don't lose this space and look into the pattern for how many singles you should make I should make one single chain one slip stitch turn make chain one skip the space and continue with the same stitch pattern back to the beginning of the row on the right side we are and that will be the end of short row two when you reach the regular markers you remember to move them up to the corresponding spaces right away so that you don't lose them and you continue with the same stitch pattern all the way up to the beginning of the row you see the regular marker again again chain one skip this regular marker move it to the corresponding space and continue to the beginning of the row which is orange in my case um, after every short row you have a stitch count in the pattern for every size for fronts backs and sleeves please check them regularly and count well so that you are on track so we come back to the beginning of the row and this is our end of short row two let's have a look again what we have we have the yoke this is the back these are the sleeves this is the front you can see that fronts are still thin enough and just much thinner than the back the back is thicker wider and the sleeves are half there is a smile building over the back this was the short row two and we will move to the short row three now we are at the short row three now um, it's made in the similar way as, th as the short row one and two again we are continuing on the same side which is the wrong side uh, right side sorry we go across the back the sleeve the front we will finish somewhere here so we'll go further again turn come back to the same for the another side again to the front come back and come back to the bull um, on this row we will be making increases everywhere both on the back on sleeves and on the front okay let's begin chain one and change to another wheel world for the two worlds option and single crochet into the next stitch and move the beginning of the boom marker to this new space continue with the stitch pattern to the last stitch and space before next regular marker to make an increase for the back okay. here 
it is. Here is the regular marker. Let's see where we should finish here. We have the last space before the marker and single crochet. Chain one, increase into this last stitch before the marker for the back. Chain one, skip the space and increase into the next one for the sleeve. And move the regular marker up to the space before the the increase between two increases you see you can see it we have two increases one increase another one and space between them uh, we continue with the stitch pattern until next regular marker we are moving across the sleeve right now okay here we are and we are making chain one and increase into the last stitch before the marker that was the sleeve chain one skip space and we are on the front already and we need to make increase on the for front as well so we make increase for front take this marker and move it again into the space between two increases not to miss it and now look into the pattern to see how many singles you should make for your own size. For my size I should make three singles and when I reach the slip stitch I will make the single crochet into the stitch of previous row where the slip stitch was made. So I chain one and I should make three singles. So chain one and one single, chain one two single chain one three singles so this is the end now I make chain one and single crochet into the next one see this is the smile is continuing to be built turn make chain one skip this space and single into the next one and continue with the same stitch pattern as before all the way back to the beginning of the round we don't have to make we don't make any increases here the only important thing on this row is to move the regular markers to the right spaces So again, do it right away uh, after you reach them. Don't leave it for later. As you can see, we, we were at the front. Now we are at the sleeve. Now increases again. Continue with the with the same stitch pattern we reached the regular marker again so we chain one skip this regular marker single crochet next move the regular marker up to the last space make sure you make Singles in all singles of the previous row, uh, row, including increases, they can be hiding, especially if you are using dark yarn, you should be careful and work with the good light and count the stitches uh, after every short row. So we are coming back to the beginning of the round, which is orange marker in my case. Okay, so we reached the beginning of the round and now we will make the same, the same stitches um, along another side of your yoke and we will not change to another wheel anymore because we used it for the first row. So just to accommodate the difference in yarns, we will continue with the same row. Uh, make chain one skip the space with the beginning of the wool marker single crochet into the next one move this marker to the new space 
and continue with the same stitch pattern until the next regular marker. To make increase for the back, we should stop before the last space before the marker. Here it is. It is one space left in one single. We chain one and make increase into this last stitch. Chain one, skip reglan and make increase for the sleeve after the reglan marker. Here is the right time to move your reglan marker to this appropriate space between the increases. We are at the sleeve already. We move forward and come to the next struggle marker and make increase again for the sleeve into this last single before the reglan marker. Chain one, skip space with marker and increase for the front. And we should move this marker to the appropriate space. And now look to the pattern to see how many more singles you should have. Uh, as on another side, I will be making three, one, two, and third one in my case will go into the same stitch of the previous row with the slip stitch already. Then I chain one and slip stitch into the next. Turn, chain one, and come all the way back. But in this case, we will not stop at the beginning of the board, but we will go all the way back to this front edge. So we'll work with the stitch, stitch pattern all the way back to the edge here and we will meet here again. I'm finishing my short row 3. I have passed the beginning of the boom marker already and I worked across the sleeve so I'm now working across the front. Uh, when you reach the last slip stitch of the previous short row you should make as before single crochet into the stitch of the previous row where the slip stitch went, so here, and continue to the very end of the row. And that will be the end of the short row 3 for your yoke. Let's have a look again. If you have a look at the front edges, you will see that here we have two rows and here we have two rows as well. So everything is symmetrical and you see this smile on the back which is growing, which is uh, not growing but reducing over over the sleeves and over the front and if we fold it if we line up the reglan markers to close the front you can see so this is the beginning of our yoke this is the neck opening you can see that back neck is higher than the front and this is what we did with the short rows. We have one more row uh, on this part which is made on the wrong side but be before we do it we should remove the beginning of the row marker we will not need it anymore and we can also cut cut another whirl here the different uh, which uh, uh, ended and the at the back at the beginning of the board point we can cut it re uh, leaving a reasonable tail so that you can weave in 
weave it in later. So cut it and proceed to the last row on this part. Um, this one is worked on the wrong side. Let's check if we are correct. Yes, we are on the wrong side. You see the right side is here and we are on the wrong side. Um, um, this row is just the, the same stitch pattern as before. You will uh, pass all the markers, move them to the corresponding spaces. And here again, on the, another, on the opposite front, you will make the single crochet into the same stitch of the previous row uh, where your slip stitch went. And you will end here where your in initial tail was. So these are the short rows. I hope this video was helpful and I hope it helped you to, to cope with them. And see you next week.